Today, scientific information is readily spread through the internet, television, radio. But long before these modalities were available, there was the public lecture. Plato and Aristotle spread their philosophies by speaking directly to the public. And then in the 16th century, Andreas Vesalius introduced the more formal public lecture when he invited people to come and watch him dissect corpses. He was kind of the father of anatomy. Of course, quackery was quick to enter the public lecture business as well. Uh, James Graham in England at his so-called Temple of Health invited the public where he regaled them with stories about his invention, the celestial bed that had magne magnets embedded in it to facilitate uh, procreation. But it was Sir Humphrey Davy who really made the scientific lecture informative, elegant, and informative in the early 1800s. And his disciple, Michael Faraday, was also well known for the lectures and people flooded the Royal Institution in London to hear his magnificent lectures, the one on the history of the candle being particularly important and uh, noteworthy. Uh, Alessandro Volta, the Italian physicist, gave public lectures on his invention, which was the battery, and even spoke about it to Napoleon. In uh, America, uh, Sylvester Graham, a very popular public lecturer, he told people about vegetarianism and about the importance of eating unrefined flour. His views spawned the Graham Cracker, although he himself had nothing to uh, do with it. Oh, there were uh, medicine shows that crisscrossed the country with uh, lecturers talking about the benefits of various snake oil. But there were good scientific public lectures as well. For example, Oliver Wendell Holmes, uh, a physician, gave numerous talks on what today we would call evidence-based medicine. And he was very critical of the drugs that were available at that time, saying that if they were thrown into the ocean, it would be all that much better for people and all that much worse for fish. Anyway, the uh, public lectures, of course, uh, have continued to this day, and today they are facilitated, obviously, by the internet. There are TED lectures on every possible topic that you can think of. Well, we also do public lectures through our office here, and every year we present the Trottier Public Science Symposium. And uh, tonight is the night. And our theme this year is the science of life and death. Tonight we will kick it off at 7 o'clock with Dr. Paul Offit, who's an expert in vaccines. He advises the CDC and FDA. It will be followed by mortician Kari Norde with some interesting stories about that business. Tomorrow, also at 7 p.m., Dr. Leslie Fellows, a neurologist, will talk about the brain, and I will finish it off by talking about spiritualism and ask the question whether or not we can speak with the dead. For more information, you can go to our website, mcgill.ca slash OSS. Everything is there, and you can stream live tonight at 7 p.m. on our YouTube channel. And now you know a little bit more about the history of public lectures. And that for today is our Cup of Joe. Hopefully we'll see many of you tonight live at 7 p.m. Check it all out, mcgill.ca slash OSS.